know, wonder, and learn. Hello everyone, I'm Mayla C. Bugarin from Ramon District. As a grade 4 learner, I've been hearing already about journalism and its importance in the society, especially in giving us information on what is happening around us. Knowing this, it made me interested to learn more about it. That is why, in this episode, I would like to learn the basic features of journalistic learning to develop my journalistic skill. Thank you and good day. Our Communication Hub and Literary Arts Center of SDO Sabella. SDO SDO English Academy. Analogy describes the relationship between words. Sub subject, verb, or teacher. One hand, one hand. English, English Academy. <laughs> Hi everyone and welcome once again to another brand new day of learning. How are you today? I hope you're all doing well. You are listening to another DepEd School on Air for Grade 4 English to Radio Escuela Sa Isabela. I am your radio teacher, Mrs. Marilu Laborte Ramos. Today we will have another fun field learning in the English Academy. So sit back and relax for I'll give you an exciting lesson that you'll surely enjoy. Are you ready kids? Yes ma'am! Before we start, make sure that you already ate your meal or snack. Find a spot at home where you can clearly hear our broadcast. Set your mind and heart for another enjoyable day with English subject. Are you excited to learn about our new lesson today? Yes, ma'am! That's great! Let us have a brief review of our previous lesson which focuses on distinguishing fact from opinion in a narrative. What are the concepts that you still remember about this lesson? That's right! A fact is a statement that is true and can be verified objectively or proven. In other words, a fact is true and correct, no matter what. While an opinion is a statement that holds an element of belief. It tells how someone feels. An opinion is not always true and cannot be proven. Always remember its difference, okay? This time, let us turn a new leaf in your journey in English 4. Writing stories are quite fictional in nature. And this time, you will be oriented with the world of truth and accuracy. Are you curious now, my dear learners? Yes, ma'am! When you hear the word journalism, what comes into your mind? Alright, journalism is the investigation and reporting of events, issues, and trends to a broad audience. Maybe many of you are fond of reading newspapers or articles or even listening and watching news and features of our day-to-day -day living. Maybe some or many of you wants to become a broadcaster or journalist. Am I right? Yes, ma'am! Mm, I can also see the faces of your young journalists who missed the press season this year. Don't worry, once the pandemic is over, we will see you again battling in various levels of press conferences. Anyway, as learners nowadays, it is essential to learn to communicate well, especially using media and develop skills in journalistic writing. Don't you know that good writing skills drive effective communication? 
and allow you to share your ideas and messages with clarity and ease. This time kids, let us widen your understanding about journalistic writing. Are you ready? Yes, ma'am! Alright, what is journalistic writing? Journalistic writing basically aims to relay information to the readers. It is another form of reporting which can either be in print like your magazines and newspapers or in broadcast like what we hear over the radio or what's from daily news TV or even to what we scan from the internet. And as you will be engaged to journalistic writing, it is a must for you to learn about the ABCs of journalism. Do you have any idea, kids? Alright, listen intently as you learn from this episode. The letter A in the ABC stands for accuracy. Will you spell accuracy, kids? Accuracy means your journalistic report must be accurate with factual information relating to the story. How you spell the word correctly is also an important concept in dealing with accuracy. You have to be accurate with facts like numbers, personal data of persons involved, and even the spelling of their names. Again, what's with letter A? Correct. This time, let's have the B in the ABC. B is for brevity. Will you spell the word brevity, kids? That's B-R-E-V-I-T-Y, brevity. This means reports must not include no wordy expressions. When writing, you only need to include relevant statements. You have to avoid unnecessary repetition. Again, what's with letter B? Very good! Do you have an idea with the letter C? Alright, C is for conciseness. Will you spell the word conciseness, kids? Great, it is spelled as C-O-N-C-I-S-E-N-E-S-S. -E -E -S -S. Conciseness in journalism means choose short, familiar, but standard words. You have to construct effective sentences and paragraphs. And if possible, achieve appropriate readability and include resources both official and unofficial to authenticate your evidences. Remember the acronym KISS when dealing about conciseness, my dear learners. That is for you to keep it short and simple. Do you want to hear more things about journalistic writing? If yes, keep on focusing as we continue our discussion. Keep in mind, my dear grade 4, that in journalistic writing, always be concrete. Stay away from abstract words. For example, the police caught a criminal at the bus station. Rather, a police caught a kidnapper at the bus station. That means the word criminal is too general. Instead, the statement must be more specific. So the word kidnapper was used. Did you get it, class? Also, in journalistic writing, one should avoid using verbal deadwoods. What does it mean? Verbal deadwoods is an excessive number of words in a script, speech, 
or other written or spoken communication. Listen to this sample statement. They are having a tour at the present time. We use the word present time to tell us when they are having their tour. Can you think of a shorter term for this, my dear learners? Correct! Instead of using present time, we can just use the word now. Rather, the sentence would now be, They are having a tour now. Did you get it, kids? Yes, ma'am! Very good! This time, kids, we will discuss the seven key features of journalistic writing. And as we go on with the discussion, try to take note of the following. But wait for you to be guided well. You may grab a newspaper or your school paper available at your houses. Come on, kids, look for one. You may have the old ones as long as you can still read them. I guess everybody is holding a newspaper now. So let's proceed. The first thing that you should be familiarized with is the headline. Will you repeat the word headline for me? Newspapers use catchy, bold headlines to grab your attention. If the headline is not eye-catching and interesting, then the reader won't read the article. Example headline is... DepEd announces dates for graduation day. Moving up, writes. The headline tells us what's the report all about. It's like a title of a short story. Did you see some headlines on the newspaper you're holding? Yes, ma'am! The second term in journalistic writing is the lead or the introduction of our journalistic report. Lead spells as L-E-A-D, lead. This is the first sentence underneath the headline that should give the reader more information on the story and sum up what is good to be about. Listen to this example. The Department of Education announced the scheduled date for graduation and moving up rights of students in public schools in the country. Technically, the headline is the shortest version of the lead. Can you still follow with the material with you? Number three is the paragraphs. In journalistic writing, one sentence is equivalent to one paragraph. The information you gathered as the reporter must be divided into several parts to help your reader clearly understand the information on the story. Paragraphs must be written in the past tense because you are reporting on something that has already happened. Also, your paragraphs must be in the third person because you are writing about somebody else. Therefore, you should not use the pronouns I, we, and you as the subject. Instead, you will use the third person pronouns such as he, she, it, or they. Can you now point out the paragraphs from the news you are holding? Number four is the data in your journalistic report, which may either be fact or opinion. Your previous lesson taught you how to identify statements which are facts and opinion, and this matters too in journalistic writing. In newspaper reports, it is but necessary to use many facts to tell these stories. Reporters 
often use the five W's who, what, why, where, and when to give the reader as much information and detail as possible. Meanwhile, stating your opinion has a separate place in journalistic writing like what is presented in your editorial or column section but still facts must be there to support the reporter's opinion so always value facts okay did you know that there's another way for you to provide facts yes and that's another feature of journalistic writing. These are the statements coming from the persons directly involved in the story or persons who are in authority to share their opinions. We call this as quotations. Will you repeat the word for me? Very good. Quotations or speed marks tells us what does involve said? For example, it was the scariest moment of my life, the 31-year-old owner told us. Usually, this type of statement are enclosed with quotation marks if the reporter presents it in direct speech, meaning quoting directly what the person said. Can you cite sentences with open and closed quotation marks from the news stories you have now? Yes, ma'am! Now kids, will you scan the other pages of the newspaper you are holding? What attracts you the most? That's correct. I know you are looking at the pictures now. Am I right? And that's the next feature of journalism. The set of photos. Photos help give a visual of a story. These pictures are important as they tell stories by giving readers a snapshot of what happened, where it happened, or who it happened to. That's also considered visual information to support that the story really happened. In photojournalism, action shots with emotions are the best pictures to show a story. Whoops! Don't just focus on staring at those pictures, my dear learners. Can you tell some sentences below or beside the pictures? Those are what you call caption. Will you spell the word caption for me? Alright, a caption is a short concise sentence explaining what is happening in the photograph. Usually, it is also answers the 5 WH question words. But in writing your caption, it must be in present tense, okay? That is for you to intensify the action being done from the photo or picture. There you have it kids, I hope you understood the important points to consider in journalistic writing and I know you are now ready for some activities for you to enhance your skills. Remember, in journalistic writing, we should focus on information which are accurate, concrete, and concise by avoiding verbal dead woods. Also, you were given the important features in journalistic writing such as the headline, lead, paragraphs, data, which can either be fact or opinion, quotations, photos, and their captions. As to the basic guidelines in coming up with a good journalistic report, just keep on listening because we will discuss this in our next episode. Will that be okay? Yes, ma'am! Alright, this time, I want you to bring out your activity notes and write the date today. What you need to do is to identify the term that I am describing in each sentence. Don't worry, I will give you the first letter of the term 
as your clue, okay? Yes, ma'am! Here's for number one. What J refers to the investigation and reporting of events, issues, and trends to a broad audience? I repeat. What J refers to the investigation and reporting of events, issues, and trends to a broad audience? You may now write your answer. Let's proceed to number two. What C refers to a short, concise sentence explaining what is happening in the photograph. What C refers to a short, concise sentence explaining what is happening in the photograph. You may now write your answer. Let's proceed to number three. What L refers to first sentence underneath the headline that should give the reader more information on the story and sum up what is going to be about. I repeat, what L refers to the first sentence underneath the headline that should give the reader more information on the story and sum up what is going to be about. You may now write your answer. Let's proceed to number 4. What Q refers to a speech mark or a statement coming from the persons directly involved in the story or persons who are in authority to share their opinions. What Q refers to to a speech mark or a statement coming from the persons directly involved in the story or persons who are in the authority to share their opinions. You may now write your answer. And for number 5, what VD refers to an excessive number of words in a script, a speech, or other written or spoken communication? What VD refers to an excessive number of words in a script, a speech, or other written or spoken communication? You may now write your answer. Are you done rewriting the sentences? Yes, ma'am! Great! Let us now check your answers. Listen very well to the correct answers. The answer for number one is journalism. Did you get it right? The answer for number two is caption. Did you get it right? The answer for number three is lead. Did you get it right? The answer for number 4 is quotations. Did you get it right? The answer for number 5 is verbal deadwoods. Did you get it right? This time, count your score then write it on the upper right corner of your paper. Let's applaud to those who got perfect score. And to those whose score is far below, don't worry, we still have more activities to do which are found in your learning activity sheets. So, let's call it a day, kids. I hope you understood our lesson well. You did a great job today. Thank you for your active participation and for listening in our discussion. Thank you, dear parents, for your unending support to your kids. Patuloy! Patuloy ang edukasyon para sa ating henerasyon. Sa gaan ang pagkatuto ay walang may iwan. Kaya halina sa Radyo! Radyo!
su Radio Escuela. With SBO Isabella Radio Production Team and Mom Mirna B. Marcos, who crafted our lesson today, this is your teacher on air, Mrs. Marilu Laborte Ramos, leaving you a challenge to always wash your hands and follow safety health protocols at home. Goodbye kids and always keep safe. God bless everyone.